Hi, I'm Ted Lowe, and I'm the author of Us and Mine, how changing your thoughts can change your marriage. And so I'm gonna answer some of your frequently asked questions, which are all about how changing your mindset can change your marriage. How can changing perspective reduce conflict in a relationship? A lot of times people are having conflicts with their spouse about silly mistakes that they didn't mean to make. I watch this happen all the time. One time I watched a couple come up from the beach and they had two little kids and uh, the wife hands the um, beach bag to her husband. It says, hold this. Well, he sets it up on a fence. And when he does, everything goes everywhere and she goes crazy on him. And I don't know what their story was that day, but I thought, I bet if her friend had done that, she wouldn't have done that uh, because she'd had to get a new friend, right? And so I think if we can just see the best in terms of their mistakes, if they drop something, if they show up 10 minutes late, if they tell the same story, but they tell it wrong, those little mistakes that you say, you know what, just in terms of their mistakes, I'm going to see the best. I'm going to give them the grace that I hope they give me when I make mistakes. That can reduce so much conflict. Or as my wife Nancy says, it reduces the petty stuff. How can nonverbal communication change our perspective on our marriage? They have different stats on this, but make no mistake about it. A lot of our communication is nonverbal. What the research shows that if your spouse is in the middle of emotion, if you'll make eye contact with them, it creates empathy in your brain for them. And it also soothes the emotional part of their brain that may be in distress. If you'll look at them, uh, mimic their face, don't mock, it's mimic their face, it creates empathy in your brain for them and they feel seen and heard. So it's those moments where you're just, people are just feeling seen. I mean, we're always so much on our phones. Sometimes the most powerful thing you can do is just put your phone down, especially when your spouse is emotional, and see them. Let them know you see them, really see them, and you're really getting what that they're saying to you. It's, it's beyond powerful. It's been one of those things in my own marriage that I had missed out on forever that I've seen so much difference because of. What is a growth mindset and how can that contribute to the health of your marriage? You guys, this one's huge. This one is massive. This explained to me why some couples will read a marriage book and it, it'll change them and others will read the same book and it won't. There's two different kinds of mindsets and this is Dr. Helen Fisher. She says that there's the growth mindset and there's a fixed mindset. A growth mindset says, hey, I'm, I'm open to growth. I'm, I'm willing to think that maybe my thinking needs a little bit of adjustment. I know my spouse's does, but maybe mine does too. A fixed mindset says, nope, 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 it is what it is. This is just what the two of us look like in the same room together. It is what it is. If you say my marriage is what it is, if that's your mindset, you are gonna be stuck. But when we're open to growth, things can start to change. What impact does my inner critic have on my marriage? So glad that you ask. I have struggled with this forever. Uh, there's a voice in my head. Yeah, there's voices. Uh, and I call him Fred. I call him Fred in my bald head. And Fred is, it's like our inner critic. And Fred is, he, he's mean. And, and the problem with Fred in my life, and I've watched it be true with other, other people, is Fred is very hateful and mean and critical and makes me anxious and makes me concerned. And here's the scary part. He becomes louder than the voice of God. So the great thing is, is we can really work on our marriage by working on what do we think about ourselves? Because then our spouse experiences someone who's less anxious, who's more present, who doesn't need them to meet God-sized needs, and a more peaceful us, and a more loved us, a changed us. They get the best version of us. Ooh, this could be one of my favorites. Can intentional thinking lead to changing perspective? Yes, that is the point of the entire book. And here's where I get really excited about this, you guys, is it's not as difficult as you've been led to believe. You really can change your mind by just being just this much intentional. It is 
crazy what the neuroscience shows, uh, but it's also the thing that scripture has been screaming all along, right? Like, be transformed by what? By the renewing of your mind, and then you can test and improve. And that's the thing I want to do with this book, is for people to take their thoughts, for you to take your thoughts and go, I'm going to test and improve. Is this God's good, pleasing, and perfect will? Is this good for my marriage? Because I used to believe every thought I had. That was not a great call. And maybe it's not a great call in your life. You know, scripture is very clear. Neuroscience is very clear. Don't trust everything you think. You need to test and you need to approve. Hey, if this got you thinking a little bit and you want to, you know, work on your thinking, maybe have a growth mindset, you can go to tedlow.com and there you're going to find not only the book, you're also going to find a video series. If you learn that way, there's small group series, you can do it as a couple. It's a lot of fun. So check that out. I'm going to tell you what Focus on the Family won't tell you and that that is you need to like this and subscribe to this because then other people can find it and you're going to get a lot more content. It's going to be right there. You're not going to miss it and you don't want to miss that on things. That'll cause you anxiety.